Hi everyone, Sarah here. I hope you guys are having a great week. I wanted to pop on here for Thursday's video and talk to you about something really interesting that happened in my life this week. So I didn't really have a topic planned out for this Thursday. I was just kind of letting it happen, see what happens in my life that's interesting. Um, and so lately, I've actually been wanting to get piercings. Now, I do have quite a backstory with piercings. Um, so I, I figured I'd make it more of like a storytelling video and just talk about the different piercings that I've gotten, where I've gotten them, um, what I would suggest doing, the healing process, which ones I still have now, which ones closed up. So settle down and let's start story time. Uh, so it all started, I think it was my 11th birthday. I had been wanting to get my earlobes pierced, like the general, you know, piercing that everyone gets usually. And I remember thinking, I'm like, why couldn't my parents just pierce my ears when I was a baby? Because I can't stand pain and I just wish it was already over and done with and I looked cute and didn't have to deal with the process. I'm not good with pain at all. And I was terrified. Went to the mall. I remember it was at the mall. I don't think it was at a Claire's. I think it was just at one of those random little booths. And I remember that, you know, I got my earlobes pierced and I got them done with like the piercing gun. And it was quick, it was easy, it wasn't too bad. I remember I teared up because I'm a big baby, but it wasn't bad at all. And I got these cute little pink um, diamondy looking studs. And I also got a little pink heart necklace to go with it. So that was my first experience with piercings. The next piercings that I got, <laughs> my mom actually did them. So my sister and I both wanted a second set of piercings on our lobe. And I remember that I got this one done first. So it was like a, a really chill day, you know, my mom got ice, a potato to put back here, a needle, sterilized it with fire, stabbed my earlobe, it's cool. Then the time that I wanted to get this second piercing done, it was stressful, we were trying to go somewhere and I was like, I just want it done because I wanted to look cute that day wherever we were going. And so I was like, oh my gosh, Shara. So my mom got the needle, put the hole in and left the needle in there because she was like, oh my gosh, I gotta go do something. And I was panicking, I'm like, but there's a needle in my ear. But eventually it all turned out great. Unfortunately though, this hole closed up. I can get an earring through the top part, but it closed up on the back, which I'm really sad about because I thought it was really cute. That's pretty much where my piercing stops for a while. And my sister, so you could blame everything that's happening now with my piercings on my sister. She, she got my obsession going with them. Yeah, my sister really wanted a nose ring. We moved to El Paso, still didn't get the nose piercing, and then we moved to the Middle East in Bahrain and got piercings there. We went to the mall, I think. Yeah, I think it was at the mall. <laughs> and they, they were like, nose piercings? What? I thought it would be more of a cultural thing in the Middle East to have nose piercings, but I guess that was my ignorance. Not everywhere is culturally used to nose piercings. So there they were like, what, nose piercings? We, we have a ear piercing gun, we could use that. So we got our noses pierced with the piercing gun, which now that I look back on that, now that I've done my research, terrible. It can crush your tissue in your nose. It could cause it to collapse. It could cause damage because it's more blunt force rather than an actual piercing. Oh, I can't believe we did that. It causes a lot of scar tissue. So funny. It turned out fine though. So like, thank goodness because it usually doesn't turn out fine when you use a, a piercing gun. But anyway, it turned out fine. You can actually still see it. Now they went a little bit lower. It's right here. They went lower than I would have wanted. I wanted it more like at the crease right here, but because they were using a gun, they couldn't go that deep. It's kind of gross to think about. They like put that up our noses and then put it on somebody else's ear. Anyway, so yeah, it pierced that. But since they didn't have nose rings, they put in earrings. So like, had a big old stud. It wasn't like the cute little dainty ones. It was a big old earring stud. And then they put in the backing on the earring, which you know is hard to get out, especially at a weird angle. So I started panicking. I was like, this thing is stuck in here. Like, I'm never gonna get it out. But then when I finally got the backing out, I was like, oh no, now it's gonna fall out. 
so it was just so stressful i remember i cried for like a good week i was just like i can't believe i did that and then i was thinking if i take it out it's gonna scar and then like i was just a mess i overthink everything so that's part of it too my sister was chill she just everything was fine with her even though we had the same issue going on but anyway so my mom had a friend who was like oh well i have a nose ring if your daughter wants it so that was really great i was able to get like an actual nose ring in there and not have to worry about it and i loved that piercing i loved it i wore it all the time super fun i would go to what's that one store called um hot topic and i would get new nose rings nose studs that it was really fun i loved that piercing i always wanted to get it fixed i always wanted to get it higher because i just didn't like the placement of it but for the time being i really enjoyed it really appreciated it unfortunately though i left the ring out long enough to where it closed on me so now i just have the little hole but it, it goes through a little bit but not all the way so unfortunately that's dead and moved on from that i don't have a nose piercing anymore so that's pretty sad but i still really love piercings always wanted to get more just never really thought about it too much i mean it was just kind of like on the back burners of my mind i hate needles i hate pain so it didn't even make sense that i wanted to do that but i just i, I guess everybody has their little thing that they go back to that's kind of like daring for them and doesn't make sense with their personality but it's just kind of a thing that they do piercings that's mine that's my like oh i want an adrenaline rush let's do it so anyway I talked about my two lobe piercings, my nose piercing, how one of my lobe piercings closed and my nose piercing closed. But this week I was like, you know what? Screw it, let's just do something fun. During my lunch break at work, let's just go get piercings. So I started looking into like really cool piercings for the ears and I ran across the Doth piercing, which is spelled almost like you would say date. And I've heard people use that before, but I think the more correct pronunciation is doth, and that's how my piercer said it, so I'm gonna go with doth. Now, you can see from, you know, I actually got it. You can see from it, it's actually this. Let me, let me show you the side because there's not a piercing on it. It's this flap here, I guess is the right term for it, of cartilage, where they pierce through it all the way to the other side and then put a ring. And so it's really cool because it follows the natural shape of your the inside of your ear, how it's round. I really like that. And if you get a certain piece of jewelry, it actually fills it even more because you can have decorations and designs. And I just think it's super beautiful, especially the location and the placement, super beautiful. And then I was kind of feeling like, let's do this. Let's do something like out of the norm. So I wanted to get multiple piercings and I went into it just, you know, ready to get the doth piercing, but I was driving there. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get another one. I'm going to get another one. So I ended up getting the conch piercing also, which is piercing through here and it goes all the way to the back of the ear, which in hindsight, when I wear a mask every day, might not have been the best choice during a pandemic because it, it rubs against the mask, um, or at least the straps of the mask, but I'm working with it as long as I'm careful when I'm putting it over and don't rip the mask off and as long as I'm careful with my hair too that it doesn't cling on to it it's totally fine and I think it's super cute and also as my doth piercing relaxes more and starts to um, lean against the skin more you'll see that ball will line up with the the um, stud of my conch piercing and so it's gonna look super cute so yeah those are my seven piercings that I have these are my newest ones a day after I got the piercing, I looked up which are the most painful piercings because I, I was thinking, well, if I get some in the future, I don't want to get the most painful ones, right? So I'm going to eliminate them from my list. <laughs> I look at the list. Number one, doth. Guys, if I would have read that before going, I 1000% would not have gotten it. So like, good on me for not doing enough research. <laughs> And then also my piercer, Courtney, I asked her beforehand, I was like, how does the pain, how is it rated like compared to a nose piercing? Cause that's probably the most painful one I had before this. 
Um, and she was telling me, well, with nose piercings, it's more of a sting, but with these, it's more pressure, which was completely true. She didn't tell me how painful it would be, which I am 1000% grateful she didn't. And after I got it done, after everything was fine, she was like, you did such a great job. And those are some of the worst piercings to get. So I didn't want to tell you that beforehand because I didn't want to scare you out of it, but like, you did great. <laughs> and so when I saw that today, that's the number one most painful piercing. <laughs> Guys, I cannot believe I survived that. It, it was so much pressure. It's going through so much cartilage. I mean, feel that area, it is thick. And then it's going through both sides. So you could put that ring. And then also because of its location and because you're going in with the straight needle, it, it hit this part a little bit. And so that stung a little bit because it was just slightly tapping. Um, and yeah, it was a sharp needle. So like, of course it hurts a little bit. It was just, it was painful. But coming from somebody who is really bad with pain and I didn't cry, I didn't scream, I didn't regret it. It's definitely bearable, 100%. If you think this is cute and you've been wanting it, do not shy away just because I said it's painful. Don't shy away because the internet says it's the most painful. It's worth it. Now the conch was number four on the list of most painful, so. And I did them back to back. I literally cannot believe that I did that. That makes me so happy that I got the most painful piercing and the fourth most painful piercing back to back, like randomly during my lunch break with nobody there with me because I don't know anybody here and they're not allowing friends in. So, good job, Sarah. <laughs> this is where I went um, to get these piercings done. It's in downtown Salt Lake City. Amazing, if you're ever in the area and you wanna get a piercing, I 1000% recommend them. Of all my experiences from the mall to a uh, piercing gun to doing it at home, it's worth every penny to get it done professionally. There was incense, it was such an open, airy, um, studio they had the the little rooms for privacy it, they had all their jewelry laid out in such a beautiful way um it was just an incredible experience they had granola bars just in case you hadn't eaten beforehand because with piercings you need to have eaten beforehand you can't have had any alcohol within the past 24 hours because that makes you prone to excessive bleeding it was just such a clean environment they actually did all the sterilization of the needles and the um, jewelry right in front of me. She cleaned my ear, put iodine on it. Um, just such a, an easy process. There, it was just very like, okay, this is happening right now. And just, you're gonna feel a little bit of a pinch, but it's gonna be okay once the initial pinch is over. It's just a little bit of pressure. And then once she was in there, she was like, okay, there's gonna be a little pinch coming out, but that means it's done. So it was just very, calming my nerves. It was a great experience. It's $35 for the actual um, piercing. So anything you get, whether it's earlobe piercing, whether it's doth, conch, belly button, anything, $35 flat rate for the service. Then you can pick your jewelry on top of that. So yeah, I went with the simplest that I could. And that was, so with the ring, the little ball here, I think was $20. And then the ring itself was 15. And then this stud was 15 and then the backing was 15 also. And then the $35 um, service charges on both piercings. And I would like to talk about tipping real fast. I would like to hear from a piercer themselves what they think about tipping because tipping is such a weird thing, which doesn't mean I think it's wrong to have tipping be a thing. I just think it's such a, a strange, unfamiliar thing that we just don't know how to do. Like I, I would rather straight up go to the person and just be like, how much do you want me to tip you? I think I think you did a great job. In general, like, how much do you think you deserve? Because I'm willing to like give you what you're worth. But I just don't know what a good rule for tipping is. So I looked online before making this video just so I could give you guys a good idea. Um, people feel the same way about tipping with piercings because they're thinking, okay, well, it's $35 for the service itself. But then if I get a $300 piece of jewelry, does that mean I have to tip like, you know, $80 just because that's what the total is? But they do the same service regardless of how expensive your jewelry is? See, my jewelry was the least expensive they have, and does that mean I should tip less than somebody who got a $400 piece of jewelry? That's where people are like, eh. So 
what I gathered from reading a lot online was you don't have to tip based on the jewelry. I don't think anybody would expect you to tip $100 more than somebody else just because you got a more expensive piece of jewelry, no. But the, the general idea is you should consider how much time they're taking to pierce you, which for me was about an hour, and how much they're worth during that hour. So like, how much do you think they deserve for, for doing that service? Which is the, so up in the air still. Um, but just the general consensus was like, $5 to $30 per hour. That's the range that is appropriate. Um, so yeah, Abyss, definitely go there, amazing. Plus their card is like super cute. It's all shiny and gold. Um, which my piercer was actually the owner and I didn't know that. She was super cool. Um, and they gave me a card talking about the chakras with piercing, which is mostly talked about in Eastern medicine. Um, essentially the doth piercing, it hits a pressure point. Um, and it's mostly like acupuncture, you know how they, they go ahead and they hit pressure points to kind of relieve stress or whatever they're doing. So when you get a doth piercing, it's hitting a pressure point that actually helps relieve migraines or headaches. It's not completely scientifically proven, but in Eastern medicine, that that's the kind of idea that they go with and they talk about chakras. I don't know too much about it, but um, my piercer just, you know, talked about it a little bit just so I could be aware of, you know, the sort of like Eastern medicine side of what I was doing, which I really appreciated. Um, she said that the piercings I was getting related with the third eye or throat chakra, which is I hear. So it's just all about like hearing. Um, it says, I see all things clearly and I manifest my dreams, which I don't generally like the term manifest because there's a lot of like, there's a lot behind it that I don't agree with, but the way I kind of interpret th interpret this is like, I don't know, I've been wanting to be a, a much kinder person and much more compassionate, open person and hearing people's problems and actually like hearing them and not just, you know, blindly hearing or going through the motions. I actually want to listen to what they're saying. So for me, it was just kind of like, oh, that's cool how it correlates and you know, it, it's a reminder now, like even if you don't believe in, um, you know, these types of things, at least like when I look at these piercings, I'm, I'm reminded, okay, like I want to open my ears and be very open to hearing what people struggle with and be kind to them. Um, and on the back of the card, it actually says, the combination of these two chakras is deeply about opening up to a new perspective and being able to be a good listener through love and compassion, which to me was like, okay, that's what I, I need to hear every time I look at these piercings. I need to be a good listener through love and compassion. So no matter what you believe in, at, at least it helps me correlate, you know, thinking about being an active listener. I really like that. And then finally, they gave me this um, paper, which is super cute, uh, just to describe how to take care of my piercings. It's the piercing aftercare, it's like a mist, I just spray it on twice a day. I also got Q-tips so I could just gently um, rub it. It's hard because the doth, it's kind of like in your ear, so it's hard to get to with the spray without actually like drowning out your ear, so that's why I got the Q-tips. So that concludes the video. If you want any more information on the piercings, um, you know, definitely comment below. Let me know if you have any advice you want to add on to it, like with tipping or whatever you think I, I kind of missed out on. Um, definitely put that in the comments. I'm gonna be linking the Abyss piercing because I thought they did an incredible job. And if you're ever in the area, ever want to get pierced, it's, it's more than just getting a piercing. It was almost like getting a massage to me. I don't know, which sounds backwards because massages are supposed to be relaxing and then this I felt like I was getting a surgery but it just was such like a relaxing experience that also made me feel empowered so I think that was a great combination hope you guys have a good week hope you're looking forward to Sunday's video I it's my favorite look ever so I'm really excited for it so I'll see you guys later bye